One thing that isn't really very significant in the, the story of human evolution, but it's just nice to know about, is this, this final species before we get on to the out of Africa question, and that is Homo florensiensis from Flores in Indonesia, which is an island, a small island. So here is a facial reconstruction. They stood just three feet tall. Um, this is an adult female here um, from the Smithsonian Museum. Um, their brains were very small, just 380 cubic centimetres. <laughs> wow. That's, but that's tiny though. Surely they've got... I didn't realise that. That's, so they're much more like a, a, an, an animal. They'll be more well, animalistic. They've Can got you even a smaller... have culture and things with a brain well, that we, tiny? It, it's funny. They, they've got a smaller brain in terms of cubic centimetres than a chimpanzee. Right. But um, they have very complex stone and wood tools were discovered alongside okay. them. Um, okay. they, they, it's <laughs> theorised that they hunted the dwarf elephants that inhib inhabited the island. So a bunch of dwarf people hunting tiny little elephants. <laughs> shouldn't laugh, really. <laughs> Just the image of that is comical. I mean, they're all dead. They're, I don't think um, the woke mob are going to come and cancel you for an extinct <laughs> species. All right. <laughs> Short but lives is, matter. But that is even smaller than modern pygmies, right? I think so. I think modern pygmies really are about four foot. Yeah, right. Whereas they're three foot. And they supposedly lived between 38,000 years ago and 13,000 years ago. Although it is possible that they may have appeared as um, far back as 74,000 years ago. And um, their origin is somewhat debated. So... So it sounds like they're just a moment in time. They sprung up and died out. Yeah. Right. I, I, right. Somehow these tiny-brained um, midgets, <laughs> I don't think that was necessarily much to compete with modern Homo sapiens. Right. I mean, if they're competing yeah. for resources, they could just hold their arms out and just say, no, nope. <laughs> they could just hold them back. They're not going to be able to harm a near six-foot Homo sapien. Right, yeah, yeah. So the origin theories for these, um, there are three distinct theories, the first of which is that they're an offshoot from Homo erectus, of course that's going back almost 1.8 million years to up to, say, um, 800,000. Um, and they were definitely present on the neighbouring island of Java, um, and perhaps they'd shrunken from island dwarfism, which of course has happened to the elephants that they were seemingly hunting. Um, however, it seems like this one is less likely because of the genetic distance between the two. Um, it's also um, been theorised that, that they were a form of modern humans who suffered from a genetic condition. Like they're all um, suffering from some form of dwarfism, but from genetic analysis it doesn't necessarily seem to be true so far from what we understand. And I think the best of the three explanations is that there are distinct species that comes from an ancestor that actually predates Homo erectus, All which right. of course is older than 1.8 million years because they have this very small brain, which by the, uh, by the time of Homo erectus, their brain capacity was already much larger. Mm. Mm. And they were much more sophisticated than what they seem to be. So it, it seems like actually it, there's completely missing tree mm. to this dwarf mm. species that existed in these islands but then also that pushes back um well when when did hominids come out of africa then if that seems to be the case because of course the research that's looked at all of the previous hominid remains does seem to suggest that this third one is the most likely but then that complicates the story of human migrations out of africa Massively, mm. because of course, well, that's potentially two million years ago that hominids were leaving Africa, if that's the case, if what we're inclined to believe is true. Where I said in the last one that the old, the classic picture of a, a monkey slowly becoming an ape and then a mm -hmm. man, finally with a bowler hat and an umbrella or something, um, <laughs> uh, that that is, <clears throat> I mean, that's low resolution to the point of being wrong. And in fact, it's more like a, some sort of tree structure. But, mm. but OK, so it's actually much more complicated than that because there'll be whole branches that came out of, as far as we can tell, nowhere and then died mm -hmm. out again before we get to the modern day. Absolutely. And it's actually multiple trees coming together. And mm. it, 
it's just it's just fantastically more complicated than than you can really map your, yeah. uh, wrap your mind around. Mm. Because again, I suppose the main thing here, the crux of what I'm trying to get at here, is that our archaeological and even DNA record is just incomplete. Absolutely, yeah. So we've only got a partial view, and it mm. just doesn't really make sense, right? Mm -hmm. You can't say oh, everything's rationally makes sense and everything leads on from there and there. Absolutely. You can't do that. That's that's why I've been so insistent that yes, we don't really know what's going on, but okay. here's a rough idea of what we think. Yeah, I say we. Yeah. I mean, I'm not involved in the research in any way, but mm. here's what the, the the scientific community that actually knows what they're talking about um, says. To watch the full video, please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com.